Welcome to One Thought at a Time with Ian Travers, where we get curious about what makes us tick. We're here today uh, with a woman who leads powerful women. Welcome, Natalie Hendricks. Thank you, Ian. It's lovely to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's great to meet face to face. Yes. It's something I know that uh, the last couple of years of COVID hasn't made possible, but uh, really appreciate the time. So let's get into the conversation. Yes. Natalie, kick us off. What do you do? So I um, am a female coach. And I uh, empower women to be brave and bold in their leadership. Um, And primarily, it's about women taking the bull by the horns and thinking about where are they at currently in life and how do they want to move forward. Um, I'm all about personal growth, personal development. And I truly believe that uh, each and every woman and male, for that matter, has that brave, bold kind of female within them. And it's about how we bring that out, how we embrace that to enable people to truly live life consciously mm. and on their terms. Yeah. And um, I said to you before, I see so many females living on autopilot, kind of glazed eyed. And for me, that was a trigger and um, through working in my corporate career, which we'll come on to, yeah. and then making the decision to um, become a coach and be self-employed. Yeah. How can I support women to kind of get that passion back, to get mm. that fire back in their belly? Brilliant. And and to truly think about what it is that they truly want. You know, are they aligned to what I describe as your North Star and your passion? Mm. And if not, why not? Yeah. Because life's a living. I love, I mean, you, you use that phrase living intentionally as well, yeah. which I absolutely love is that, you know, not letting a moment slip by and being in the moment, I think mm. is really important. Completely. I mean, I can reflect and count several times where I've kind of had that Monday blues feeling oh we're back or countdown to Friday and just not living purposely not living consciously not looking up and looking around and and experiencing life for what it is and that's not being away with the fairies it's just being conscious about you know am I showing up as I want to wholeheartedly yeah am I feeling as though I'm making a difference yeah and I suppose the trigger for me was um I knew I had more to give Mm. In life, and that sounds quite ooh, grand, but for me, there was this feeling, this inner knowing, this intuition inside me. I was kind of not listening to it, I was allowing the kind of macro noise to drown that out. And I was yeah. like, let's just focus in on that intuition and think about what is it that you truly want to do? Mm. How do you want to show up? Yeah. Do you feel, feel aligned with kind of the direction of, of life that you know, yeah, is ahead of you? Um, and it's the, the thing is, I mean, the thing I find fascinating in this whole space. Mm is so many people will go through their days, weeks, life, years, paying no attention to that at all and almost being just, in, it's invisible to yeah, them as well. it is. I, I often describe just on that point to a lot of my clients about the ability to kind of really tune into your intuition because we don't do it, like mm. you say. We allow that to just kind of pass us on by. And I describe it as if you think about an orchestra, mm. you've got the kind of, Your intuition is what I would say is your piccolo in that orchestra. Right. That tiny kind of high vibe noise that's there and it contributes to the overall sound. But we don't tune in and we don't listen to that. We're kind of distracted by the drums and the brass and everything that's going on. Yeah. But when we truly start to hone in, we see how that intuition, that piccolo, truly contributes to that overall sound, that overall direction of what is life? What do we want to be showing up as? How do we want to be? I love that picture. Yeah. That's that's really that's really powerful, isn't it? Yeah. The sound of that that, that little tiny mm-hmm. sound. Um, we do drown so much stuff out, and I mean we haven't got one in the room today, but our smart devices help us drown stuff yeah. out, don't they? Completely. You know, in those moments where we might have been silent before, we fill that silence with the latest social feed, exactly. which has a place, of course. But I think it's it's just taking. I, I don't know whose quote it was, um, but someone said that the greatest inventions in life have been conceived in moments of silence. Mm. So if you don't listen to yourself. Mm. So, God, how did you end up here? Let's he, tell us your story. How did you get here? Yeah. What were the twists and turns? Oh, so I so I'm a one of four, three brothers. Um mum and dad always been very hard working. My dad's always run his own business in the construction world, which is well away from where I am now. And um, but my brothers all kind of followed the the trend of my father which was to work for the family company and I as the only female in the household other than my mum who was um teaching assistant but you know was very much at home with us as children as we were growing up and um, almost repelled that from an early age 
I'm not doing it that way. I'm going to do my own thing. So I was like, I'm going to, and for me at that time, because it was the family business, it was, I'm going to go out into the big corporate world. I'm going to get my first job and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do well. I'm going to show these guys. And yeah. yeah. um, the kind of inner feminist in me coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will do it. And I, and I did do it. So I, I very much started in, um, went to university, traveled the world for 12 months, which is amazing experiences, kind of gave me that life experience. Mm. Um, and then kind of stepped into recruitment. So recruitment consultancy, loved it, loved working with people, loved talking, <laughs> as you know. That's quite a competitive environment very, as well, isn't it? Very competitive. And it was, I was successful at it, did really well, but the sales eventually just got me to the point where I was like, I can't, this is not for me. I don't feel like it's really authentic to who I am. Mm. So that pushed me into the world of HR and hence my kind of corporate HR career, mm. HR leadership development kind of um, bloomed from there. And I just kind of went through the motions, to be fair, um, and personal life, met somebody, got married at an early age. And that was, it started and finished within about a seven year span, was married for 12 months. But when that marriage broke down, and I talk about this openly, because I think it's important that people know that we all go through things in life and there's no shame in that. Mm -hmm. It's about the learning you gain from it. Yeah. But what that personal experience did for me in my corporate role, Yeah. I just went head down and I was like, boop, boop, boop. And I just went higher and higher and higher and kept going and going and going to got to quite a senior position in yeah. my corporate career. Yeah. And then I had one of those moments where I stopped. I was like, how have I got here? <laughs> right. You know, I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I was successful, but is this truly what I want to be doing? Yeah. So senior BP, business partner, leadership development, a lot of executive coaching, um, working with directors, exec directors. Yeah. And I think I'd always prided myself on almost... It sounds cringy saying it now. Being with people of high profile nature, high profile mm. roles, etc. And yeah. I almost valued that in terms of that was my worth. Yes. And then I'm, I stopped. I met my now husband. I've got my two young kids who are yeah. six and four. And the pandemic hit. Mm. And during when my kids were younger, before the pandemic, I was literally traveling on the road constantly. Yeah. And I'm talking day in, day out. I, I live up north, I was down south, and it was just continuous. Yeah. I was literally living on autopilot. Mm. And it wasn't until pandemic hit that I stopped and I was like, this is not for me. Mm. I always knew there was that more. I could give more. And the coaching always fired me up. I just enjoyed, you know, helping to help people. And um, I kind of described my coaching as you're dancing in the wind. <laughs> you're dancing <laughs> yeah. in the wind because you yeah. don't know which point you're going to get to, but it's about supporting people, enabling them to kind of really be experts of their own subject matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not, we're not doing anything. We're just helping to guide people to enable them to get to their best self. Helping them unpack their own thoughts because yes. it's messy up there, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. It completely is. And that's messy based on, you know, life experience. It's ingrained behaviours. It's beliefs from when we were kids. And... People don't stop and realise that, realise they've got a choice. They've got a choice to change some of that up. And I just thought to myself, if I can start to help one person, which might contribute to two people and three and so on and so forth, then how rewarding is that? So my world now is, I, I still have my corporate role, it's condensed, but I have my own business where I'm supporting women to be brave, to be bold in their leadership. And yeah. it's allowed me and given me a real sense of perspective around, well, what's important to you, Natalie? It's not the next promotion. It's not yeah. the high paid salary. Yeah. It's the freedom. It's about being able to be with my kids yeah. and see them on a morning and a night time. And also, you know, experience just stopping. I, I always use the phrase, the power of the pause. The power to pause, the power to reflect, the power to just look up and around and see what's there and available to you. Yeah. And I truly believe when you're an autopilot, because it's my own, be my own experience, I didn't do that. Yeah. We, we actually fill in our own gaps, don't we? Of course we do, yeah. The, the, you mentioned that word freedom. Mm. So what, what, what does that mean to you? Freedom for me is um, time. Mm. So free time. Time to do, not as I please, but time to just have the ability to stop, to, to live life on my own terms, mm. to live life consciously rather than it almost being dictated by others. Yeah. There's that sense of control. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, I like things to be in order and you know a, a certain way about doing things, but having that flexibility, I think, just gives you that ability to live life to the fullest. It's interesting, isn't it? You, I often hear people use phrases like, uh, I can't do that, or I must do oh, that, yeah. or I should do that. Yeah. 
Um, and that's almost you, you're definitely not living life intentionally no. there, are you? And it's and it's it it might be just a turn of phrase, but that's powerful language, isn't it? It is, and I it, you know I'm smiling because I had a client who, um, we we really honed in on the language she was using, mm. and she kept saying, "I need to, mm. I need to," and I was like, "Hmm, you need to or you want to." Subtle change, yeah. but the outlook's very different, and I do think that. Um, so I'm an English graduate, so words and language and all that mm-hmm. jazz is, you know, it's, it's really powerful to me. And I just think the language that we use is the narrative that we are feeding ourselves day in, day out. And, you know, if you tell yourself something enough times, you start to believe it. Oh, absolutely. Right or wrong. Yeah, completely. Right or wrong. And there was a quote that I read a few um, months ago, which was the, the most powerful voice that you should be listening to is your own. Because oh, yeah. that's the one that's talking to you every day. There was a, there's, there's a, I mean, I so agree with that. And I was a running event a few years ago now, and we were talking about, you know, who, who, you know, who's your most vocal and powerful coach? Mm. You know, well, it's you. And someone said, yeah, I get that. And I said, why, why, why do you get that? He says, because your mouth is the closest to your ear. Completely. And I thought, <laughs> yeah. It completely, that is completely true. It's true, it? though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It really is. And it's, you know, when I speak to my clients, especially female clients um, whom suffer, I include myself in that, mm. um, with imposter. Right, and so tell me a bit about this. this yeah, so tell yeah. us more about that, yeah. you know, because it's, I was going to ask you about, you know, why why focus on, on, on the female yes. uh, coaching as well? So Yeah, I think for, for me, the, the female element is, um, well, I, A, I am a female, and B, um, in my corporate role, being surrounded by so many females with such potential mm. who are stopping themselves from excelling or just taking that step. Yeah. And a lot of times it has been based upon the narrative that they're telling mm-hmm. themselves, the imposter that's stopping them, that's paralyzing them with fear. Yeah. And for me, I was kind of like, you know, I can see very much how I didn't use my voice sometimes. Whilst I was successful, I didn't mm-hmm. sometimes use my voice. I wasn't always true to myself in terms of what I really felt. Yeah. And sometimes in, in particularly male dominate, dominated environments yeah. was quite quiet or would kind of nod, but not truly share how I was feeling. Mm. So I was kind of like, if there was anybody else that I can see who is exhibiting those behaviors or, mm. you know, acting as I did act um, at times, then if I can help them to have that voice, to have that power within, to speak up and to kind of drown out the noise of that, imposter then yeah. that's really powerful stuff yeah because I think one of the things that I pride myself in terms of my own leadership is whether I'm coaching you whether I'm sat here having this conversation with you whether I am in my corporate role mm. the Natalie you see here is the Natalie you would see anywhere else yes there's circumstances where you, you change your style slightly yeah but I truly believe that I am authentic to myself now and I yeah. think for a lot of of time I wasn't always that way right. and I think that was based on fear what will people think of me that's interesting that isn't it the other thing I wonder and it's women in the workplace mm. uh, particularly you know where you know they are in a minority I wonder is there another pressure there where is there almost that that perception that's maybe you, you feel you're expected to be overly vocal sometimes and that's also then can be putting pressure on as well mm. it's it, it's it's quite a complicated it place is. isn't it it all comes to the word balance for me and i think you're right i think there's an expectation um i think there's an expectation that you're almost i, I talk a lot about feminine and masculine energy mm. and i think it's about how you embrace both because there's a place for both mm. um but I think sometimes, particularly in corporate, there's an expectation that you will be more of that masculine energy. Mm. She's coming. She's yeah. saying it, isn't it. She can hold her own with the men, yeah. you know, rather than actually just being yourself. Mm. And for me, there's far more power in both being authentic and finding that balance of both your feminine and your masculine energy yeah. and showing up as you are. Yeah. You don't need to be in the boardroom with the, you know, the suits on and, and feel like you're competing. You can just be yourself as you are. Yeah. But I think there is an ingrained fear that if I do that, what will they think of me? Mm. Will it be, you know, out you go, let's bring in the next one that can hold their own. Yeah. And um, cause you can do it, but in your own way. Yeah. And I think that's the important thing, isn't it? Is, is, whoever we're working with in this space, it's helping people unpack what is, who are they? Yeah. You know, who is that person? And I suppose there comes the time that actually if the person you want to be 
doesn't fit where where you are, then you need to take control, don't you? All about control, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it truly is, though. But it's it's the um, you know we operate from a place of fear hmm. largely because the brain's here and it's trying to protect us all the time. Yeah. So there's a place for that, but we we ultimately feel safer when we can control things and things feel comfortable. Hmm. But then I always say to my friends and to my colleagues and my my clients. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you can just step outside of that comfort zone and not feel stagnant and not feel like this is just, you know, the motions. Yeah. That you can actually kind of break through that breakthrough point and feel the other side of being in that uncomfortable zone for a second, which might feel uncomfortable, but ultimately that is where the magic then happens. Yeah. And that's where you start to feel, right, oh, right, there is more outside of this place, you know? Pushing through it, isn't it? Go in the other side. There's yeah. a there's, there's a book, isn't there? Um, feel the fear and do it yes. anyway. Yep. Um, because, you know, fear's there because we're conditioned by whatever's gone before to yeah. feel that way. So and yeah. we can change that. Yeah, of course. But, but it's all, it, it kind of stems back for me, um, Ian, all to mindset and to identity. Because ultimately, I'm a, I'm a huge believer that we operate based on our existence, where mm. we've come from, who we are, what our identity is, our beliefs, our religion. You know, all yeah. of these elements contribute to who we are today, how we're yeah. showing up, what's our narrative mm. that we're telling ourselves and other people. Yeah. And that is defined by the habits. Yes. And however we are behaving and the habits that we've got is defining who we are right yeah. now. Yeah. And people often have a fear of breaking those habits. Mm. But ultimately, it's kind of like, I always say, I'm not one for New Year's resolutions because that's then a battle of just willpower. And you, you, you and me both. You know, I'm like, no, <laughs> this doesn't work for me. I'm like, if you want to change it, you have to be thoughtful about who who are you and what are you trying to be? You know, what do you want to achieve? Because that's about your identity for me. And until you start to think like that person, that future version of yourself, it's just a battle of willpower. And eventually, you know, you'll revert back to type. Yeah. Particularly when the pressure's on as well. Completely. Yeah, I, I, I smile as well on the New Year's resolution because the last couple of years I've, I've put something out on YouTube about New Year's resolutions and saying just don't do it. Yeah. Um, because... What I feel is that resolutions, they're not yours, they're someone else's. Yeah. You're doing, you know, oh, I'm going to lose weight. Why? Well, because I think I should. I'm going to run a 10K. Why? Oh, because I think I should. Yeah. It's all for someone else, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Rather than, we'll just work out, you know, over a cup of tea or something at the start of the year in January. That's a good time for but Work out what you would like to do for you. But that's the hardest question. Yes. So with my clients, I always say something. They always think I'm being, oh, here she goes. Harsh Natalie's coming in. And I'm like, I'm not being harsh. But, you know, what do you think? What would you like? What's important to you? And the answer I often get initially is, I don't know. Hmm. And I say, you do know. You just haven't looked. You just need to be more curious. You need to, that's part of the fun. That's part of the journey. You know, I was talking to a client yesterday who said, I just don't know what it is that I want to do. And I say, but that's, that's part of the fun. That's yeah. being curious, being open-minded to testing stuff rather than just closed book, fixed mindset to, no, I don't know, so I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And maybe, maybe sometimes there's there's fear here as well, isn't there? Mm -hmm. That, uh, it, and maybe the little narrative in your head is, I don't want to answer that question because I might be afraid of the answer. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I, I, I coach beginner runners as well and... Um, it's quite interesting unpacking why people run. Mm. And I know this from personal experience. I started running in 2001. Um, and it took me almost two years to work out why I ran. Mm. But as soon as you've worked out why, mm. it's easy after that. Exactly. Well, I mean, you know, it still makes you work hard, but it's <laughs> different, isn't it? And it's, and it's the same with everything we do, isn't it? You know, finding that why. Tell me a bit about um, the... I think you call it the, the Brave Bold Female Retreat. I do. I'm fascinated by uh, that. Love them. So when I first set up my business, it was all about coaching and I've got a Brave Bold Female Leadership Programme as well. But I always knew, this is the traveller in mm. me, um, that I wanted to host my own retreat. Okay. And the vision was always, I'm going to go abroad, it's going to be, you know, the spa and everything. Mm. And um, But I was kind of like, right, how... If I could combine the luxury of hosting a retreat somewhere, whether that's in the UK or that's abroad, mm. with the ability for females to come together, together 
to have the power of connection, mm. to understand, see that other women are experiencing the same things that they are feeling and experiencing mm. and have the opportunity to just shut off from day-to-day -day life yep. and really embrace themselves in the moment, the conscious right. living, Yes. then how powerful would that be? Mm. So I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give this a whirl. So we've hosted two of our Brave Bowl female retreats already in the UK. Okay. Um, one was in the Yorkshires and one was in uh, Cheshire. And then we have an overnight long weekend one coming up in October, yeah. which is also going to be in the uh, also going to be in the UK purely because of everything that's been going on with travel restrictions. But the aim is that as we move into the new year, that there'll be one abroad. And um, but Ian, let me tell you, these retreats are so powerful. Mm. I mean, the emotion in the room. We keep it tight, so we keep it ten or less, yes. and that is purposeful. Yeah, because I. It's not for me about having 50, 60 people in the room. Yeah. And the and when I say the power of connection, it sounds cheesy, but truly when you bring together like-minded women mm. who are all in a safe space where they can share how they're feeling, it's just amazing what people get out of the day. Yeah. And it's rewarding for my own self. Um, but typically the, the retreats so far have stemmed around kind of three key areas, which are around identity, mm. understanding who I am, yeah. how I show up, what it is that I, you know, how I've got to this point in life. Yeah. And then we focus in on mindset. So we kind of zoom in and say, okay, so if this is my identity, what does that mean for my mindset? Yeah. Because I am of the opinion that your mindset's almost like a house. If the foundations are not in place, then it's going to come tumbling down. Absolutely. You might yeah. have success for a moment in time, yes. but eventually it's going to creep up on you. So yeah. let's get really clear in terms of what's my mindset. Let's get those solid foundations in place. Love it. Yeah. And then thinking about what are those things that will enable us to be successful. So what are my boundaries? Mm. That self-respect for my own self. Yeah. You know, my boundary between you and I, et cetera. Um, and just give people tools, tips, techniques, exercises. We do a lot around body and mind connection, how we connect the two. It really right. enables you to excel. Yeah. And um, so it's a it's a day of learning, activity, getting involved, having that downtime. And um, I'm a huge fan of meditation because um, that's really helped me to kind of yeah. be purposeful. Yeah. You know, set the tone of my day. So there's a lot that we pack into there, but people have just been raving about it. And they were like, you know, just do more. We need longer because the connection has really helped us to see. I think that's really, it, it, I'm really, really curious about that because it's something that, uh, that I've, I've thought about for, for a while is how, how do you, you know, rather than just spending a few hours with someone, how do you, really make that difference yeah. because you know i know you know in the coaching space as well mentoring space whatever it is you to change those habits you know it's it, it can be quite quite difficult the meditation piece as well um i find this an interesting one this because as we go through mm. um sort of life things become hip and trendy and a lot of people you know have talked about you know mindfulness yes. and meditation yeah. and sometimes i think we lose some of the goodness in the hype because meditation um, means many things to many people, but it's basically being still, isn't yeah. it? And just taking time. Mm. <laughs> Interesting fact, isn't there, that we, we, I think we spend more time looking after our teeth than we do our mental well-being. Yes. But even you can even meditate whilst you're doing your teeth. Of course you can. And, <laughs> and I think that, that there's, for me, there's, there's a kind of misconception around meditation that people think... I've got to, it is about being still. It's been about mindful, but for me, it's about focus. Mm -hmm. And I was one of these that always told myself, well, I can't do that because I'm an extrovert and I can't, I can't sit still and it's just not for me. And then I kind of gave it a go because it was something I was always really curious about. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just, I describe it as, it's the calm. So I meditate every morning. I'm not talking about sat in a lotus position for 50 minutes, 60 minutes. I'm talking 10 minutes max. Yeah. I've got young kids. Yeah. I might distract them. Yeah. And let me, but it's the first thing I do. So when you were talking earlier about distractions, mm. social media, etc. Yeah. Old Natalie would be, wake up, alarm, snooze, snooze, snooze. Oh, I'll look at my phone. What's going on in the world? And for me, it was all that toxicity. Yeah. Was feeding my brain and setting out my day. Mm. So for me, it's about wake up. Go downstairs, pop the kettle on, 
sit down, I have a little corner, it's my space, it's inviting, it's somewhere I want to go to where I just have 10 minutes of calm. Mm. And sometimes it's guided, sometimes it's just music on, sometimes it's just doing, as you said, sitting still and listening to my breath. But it sets me up for the day and I do not look at my phone until I have done that. Mm. Because it's just putting my mindset into the right frame of mind to take on the day. Yeah. Now that's not saying I'm Zen all day long, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's just, it, it just has made such a difference to me. Yeah. And you know, for people that say I can't do it, if you just sit for 30 seconds, just listen to your breath, inhale and exhale. Yeah. Instantly you feel calmer. Yeah. You know, yeah. anyone could do that. You it's know? not to be underestimated. I mean, I've, I've, you know, many of us have, I'm sure, you know, struggled with stresses and stuff. But um, I used to fly quite a lot. Um, and for a long while, I had quite a fear of flying. Um, but then the power of just a few moments, just, you know, even if you use the app on your phone yeah. about, you know, the breath app. Yeah. Um, and that's what it's got me more and more curious over, over the years about the connection between mind and body yeah. because they're not separated, no. they are the same. And that's mm. why I'm really curious about, mm. you know, the, the retreat as well because I mm. think bringing those together, yeah. I think that sounds a, a mighty powerful, yeah. mighty powerful yeah. thing. My husband um, does an exercise during the workshop. So he is he's a pers- personal trainer by trade but is a holistic mm. coach as well. So we talk a lot about working out and he prep kind of positions the session about working in. Mm. So thinking about your chakras and thinking about what is it that you need to do that movement piece in terms of that physiolo- physiology, yeah. can never say it, and, and how that connects to our mind. Yeah. Because the two can operate on their own mm. to a degree. Yeah. But when they're connected, you know, that's really when you start to maximize and optimize in terms of who you are, how you're showing up, etc. Yeah. Um, and it's simple things like, you know, power poses and, and you're tricking the brain constantly, but that is always of feeding and fueling that mind and body connection. Yeah. And, you know, you just mentioned about running. You can't deny it. You can tell yourself, your brain will be saying, no, 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 I don't want to do it, don't want to do it. But when you go out there, you do genuinely feel better after you have moved your body. And yes. then the endorphins are raising and it, it helps with everything around risk tolerance, etc., and just enables you to be a bit braver. It's, I mean, we generate our own drugs. Of course. <laughs> and it's, yeah. and once, uh, and when you realise that, it, it's uncanny. I have never, in all the years I've run, I have never come in from a run feeling bad. Yeah. I might feel tired yeah. and achy or whatever, mm. but never bad. Mm. You know, and that's, we've got it there. It's on tap, isn't it? It's yeah. absolutely on tap. It is, it is. So, so for me, there's a real, you know, identity, mindset, mind and body connection. It's, it's critical to your success. Mm. And whilst I work with a lot of women in a leadership space, I suppose where I feel I am slightly different is that for me, all of that contributes to you being that optimum leader. Because mm. any of us can be leaders. This is mm. not just a leader in a corporate setting. I yeah. truly believe that we're all leaders at heart. Yeah. Um, but it's about tapping into almost those different elements that contribute to who you are and yes. how you're showing up. Yeah. I mean, leadership, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, I know when I've spoken about leadership before, before we can lead others, let's lead ourselves. Absolutely. You it know. starts with number one. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if, you know, if I'm not convinced by my own self, then I'm sure as heck not going to convince other people either. It's interesting. I was um, with someone this week who was describing, um, they actually described their own team. They said, you know, when you've got like the uh, the angel on my left shoulder and I've got the devil on my right shoulder, well, there's two men members of your team, you know, and there's a lot more in there. Exactly. And it's, it's trying to get all that under control definitely, first of all. Definitely. Um, what's your next project? Oh, so I, so I have just set up my Brave Bold Female Leadership Programme, which is a rolling programme for females to jump onto, um, which is working with me coaching, but also a lot of resource content aligned to specific leadership pillars. There's three key leadership pillars around leadership brand, mindset, and style. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're really promoting that at the minute. Um, I am thoughtful about doing my own podcast here, <laughs> so there's a few tips here. Okay. Um, but, but just maximising on the retreat as well. And I think for me, it's about just being content with how things are going and just enabling and putting myself out there more and you know not wanting the best next big thing because I just feel more content in the sense that I I know things will come and life evolves so it's about let's keep to continue and evolve what we've got in place at the minute and just enjoy that oh I think that's so powerful isn't it it's it's not about chasing 
turnover revenue likes or whatever i think if you just keep doing what you're passionate about the next door will open yeah. i always say there's two c's com- commitment and consistency huh. and to my clients commit wholeheartedly yeah. and be consistent so keep it. showing up keep doing it day in day out as long as you're passionate about it eventually you know naturally the cycle will just keep continuing and people see that don't yeah. they you know, people see when you're passionate about something, mm. um, it's it, it just shines, yeah. it, it radiates. It does. Um, we could talk for ages I on know. this. Um, <laughs> I um, I'd like to ask you one more question, mm. um, and I ask the same of this of everyone who comes in. Imagine we can conquer time travel. So let's just take that as an assumption. Mm. But now you can write yourself a letter, Natalie. So you can write it on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope and leave it somewhere for for the younger Natalie to find. Mm. What would you write on it knowing what you know today? This is a very good question, Ian. And I think for me, it would be just trust. Just trust in being yourself wholeheartedly. Mm. And that sounds quite simple, doesn't it? But... I think often we, I know for me growing up, it was all about seeking that recognition and external validation. Mm. And now it's about self-acceptance. Yeah. So if I could tell my younger self one thing, it would be just trust in the process, but trust in yourself trust and in be yourself. yourself wholeheartedly. Yeah. Because we're all different and that's the beauty of life. Mm. Um, but it's about being true to yourself. And I think sometimes I haven't necessarily done that. Um, and now, having stepped into that version of myself, it just feels so much more powerful and so much more, you know, I'm just able to enjoy life more. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. Natalie, thank you ever so much. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and obviously if anyone wants to find anything out yes. about uh, the... Brave Bold Female Retreat, yes. then of course reach out to you. Yes, absolutely. You can find me on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, at I am Natalie Hendricks. Brilliant. Natalie, thanks ever so much. Pleasure. Thank you ever so much. This has been One Thought at a Time uh, with Ian Travers and our guest this time, Natalie Hendricks. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, please uh, share and like if you've done so and do enjoy the rest of our podcasts. And of course, reach out uh, to Natalie um, or myself if you want to find out anything more. See you next time.